everybody. This is Laura, CD Scrapper. Thanks so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I have a layout that I made for the My Creative Scrapbook Limited Edition Kit for April. This month the kit featured some beautiful 49 and market papers and embellishments from the Art Options of Vesta collection. One of the other items that was in the kit was this beautiful set of chipboard from Stamperia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And this is just one of the elements. There were quite a few others in this set. I'm just using this particular piece and I'm going to be incorporating it into one of the pattern papers that's a wreath. Because this is a large piece, I didn't want to just have one flat color, so I thought I would layer up some of the embossing powders. I'm using three different colors. I'm using a Ranger Lime Tinsel. I'm also using some Moxie Metallic Green and then another brand, it's called Topiary Tapestry and that one didn't have the name of a color on it. For the first two layers, I put the same color. I used the color that was neither the darkest nor the lightest, the, the medium value color. Once I had heat embossed that, I added just a few dabs of glue. I used the dauber that's over to the left rather than the pad, the Versamark pad that's over to the right because it helped me to be able to just put the adhesive in a couple of places. So first I put on touches of the darkest color and then I went back and put on touches of this lighter color. And then I thought it looked pretty but I was afraid that it was just a little too spotty that it had to be dulled down a little bit so I used my paintbrush and I just lightly brushed away some of the embossing powder not all of it. I wanted there to be variation in color but I didn't want it to look like spots of color I wanted all the colors to blend together. I heat embossed that layer of color and then I used the dauber and I again put the adhesive in a few places all over the chipboard and then I added the darkest color again. And I think this last layer of color really helps to bring the whole piece together and make the colors look more blended than spotty. I heat emboss this piece one more time and then I use the exact same layering of the embossing powders on some smaller leaves and I do that off camera. You'll see those when I start making the layout. These are some of the elements that I chose to put on the layout. These are from the cut apart sheet and also the ephemera pack that's included in the kit. I use some distress oxide in peeled paint and I ink the edges of all of these elements and that includes the inside of the picture frames and I think that this helps to bring all the pieces together. As soon as I saw this piece of pattern paper, I knew I was going to stitch on it. It's fairly similar to another piece of paper. It has a whole different look, but the style is similar to another piece of paper that I stitched on. And there's times when there's something on a layout that just makes me want to do some stitching, and this was one of them. So I use some DMC, I think it is, embroidery floss. I usually just use some of the thread that's in my stash, but I wanted to match the colors exactly, and I stitched in two different colors on the layout, and I'll put those numbers in the description box in case you're interested. I think that they match this collection pretty well. I have three photos. One is a four by six inch photo cut down, and then the other two I printed on my Canon selfie in a smaller size so that they would fit into these smaller frames. I like to reinforce elements that I put on my page that I know I'm going to pop up on some foam. So I'm using some heavyweight cardstock and just roughly cutting it to size to put behind each of these frames. I know I'm going to pop them up and I want to make sure that they're sturdy. Next, I put the same heavyweight cardstock on the back of these three sentiments. I know that I'm going to pop these up as well. And again, I want to make sure that they're sturdy. This is 120 pound cardstock, so it's pretty thick and it's perfect for this use. I cut these off of large 12 by 18 inch pieces of paper that I use for mixed media projects. And that extra six by 12 inch piece of paper comes in handy in so many ways. So out of one 12 by 18 inch piece of paper, I'm able to get a piece of paper for mixed media for scrapbooking and then also have a little bit to play with for different uses on my projects. I cut that piece of chipboard in half 
I was initially going to put both of those halves on the top of the layout and I just couldn't make it work when I was arranging the elements. So it finally struck me that I could put one on the top and one on the bottom and I decided to go with that arrangement. For most layouts, I have an idea of what I want to do and then I will just start working with that vague idea. For this layout, I was a little bit more careful because I wanted to make sure that those three frames were going to fit on the page and that all the embellishments were going to be able to fit on the inside of the wreath shape. So I planned this one a little bit more than I usually do. Now I wanted to add a little bit extra bling to the flowers. So I took these flowers, these are from the kit, and I added some heavy duty gel medium to the edges and then dipped them in some diamond dust and that makes them very, very sparkly. I wasn't sure if you could really read this title clearly. This is gonna be my title of the layout. So I wanted to make sure that you'd be able to read it without having to look too hard. So I started using a pink slick writer and outlining the word beautiful. And then I looked at it and I didn't think it made much of a difference. So I went back with a green marker and I did the same thing. And then finally, by the end of the layout, I had outlined it in black. And I hope that it makes it more readable. I'm not sure if that helped or actually made it more confusing, but that was my thought process. Now I'm attaching those flowers down. I put the largest pink one on the top and then I scattered those smaller ones at different intervals around the wreath. And now I'm adding my photos and as I had said, I'm popping them up on some foam. This is fun foam. This is available in the children's section of any craft store and I get the kind that's adhesive on one side and I find it so useful for adding just a little bit of dimension to my pages. And then you could see that on the smaller frames, I just put the fun foam on the side that was farthest away from the center. That way one side would rest on the photo in the center and then the other side would be supported by the foam. So I arranged those not in a straight line. I wanted to have them a little bit angled. And then I added the coral flower on the left and I had to move it a little bit because it was too far outside of the wreath area. So I moved it in a little bit and I ripped the paper a little bit, but that's okay because I was able to cover it up with the leaf. Earlier I used the heavy duty gel medium to attach the diamond dust to the flowers and then I used that same gel medium to attach the flowers down to the page. It's a really strong adhesive. And this is where I use the fine green marker to go over the pink lines that I made on the title. Again, just wanted to be a little bit more legible. After I outlined the word beautiful in green, I decided that I wanted to pop the title up on some foam. The letters of this title are very thin, so I need some very thin strips of the foam to back it. And I like to save my white foam for these occasions because sometimes if you use a brighter color, you can kind of see the foam. So I use the brighter color foam on things that are larger. And then for things that are very thin like this, I put aside the white foam and that way, if you do see the foam, it's white rather than some really bright color. And right here, I'm using the brown foam because even though these are thin strips, they're not super thin. So I don't think you'll be able to see the foam from the front. So it's fine to use the brown foam on these. So after I pop these sentiments up, I put a little ATG adhesive on the back and I attach them over the photo. These photos were taken quite a few years ago in Cape Cod. We had gone to Martha's Vineyard for the day and we had taken one of those really large boats over there. I guess it's a ferry. We wanted to go to Basil Thai Cuisine, our favorite restaurant on Cape Cod, when we got back, but we weren't sure we were going to make it in time because the restaurant closed at 10 o'clock and we must have been cutting it very close. So I remember us rushing and being so excited when we got there and there were quite a few people in the restaurant and we were really happy to end our day with a meal from this place that has this amazing Thai food. The leaves that I'm attaching now are chipboard leaves that were in the kit. They were in the same pack as that really large branch that I had on the layout. So I embossed those the same way that I embossed the large branch. 
And now I'm using some glue and I'm gluing my title down. And I use some Aileen's gel glue to attach that down. I had a couple of really tiny butterflies that I fussy cut out of one of the branding strips. I was considering popping them up, but then I decided they were just too small. So I decided to just attach them right down to the layout. Next, I'm going to add some watered down white acrylic paint splatters to the layout. I'm using whatever I can find that's on my table to protect my photos. And although, of course, splatters go everywhere, I'm concentrating them on the larger clusters. I often find with these 49 market papers, you really don't need to add too much mixed media because there's the look of mixed media already in a lot of the pages. But I find with these 49 and market papers, I don't always use mixed media. So I think that white splatters are a nice way to add that element to the page without covering up any of the beauty of the pattern papers. So I add a few more white splatters and then I put the layout aside to make sure that everything's dry. Once it dried, I added the date. I'm using one of the tabs that's in the ephemera pack and a date stamp. And I use the same color distress oxide and stamp the date on that tab. I'm adding these fussy cut leaves to the layout. I decided that they would look nice up on the top next to the flower that's on the right. I felt there was a little something missing with the page. So I was thinking I wanted to add a little bit of pattern paper to the top and the bottom of the page. And I didn't want to add more paper strips. I've been using that technique a lot lately. So I decided to just cut away a piece of the pattern paper and put some floral pattern paper behind it. I always find doing this part a little bit stressful. You really can't go back and undo two big cutouts in your page, but I ended up liking it. It worked out. So I have this piece of pattern paper that I fussy cut most of it out, but I thought that this would be a good paper to put behind that opening. I like this pattern paper because it has all of the colors that are already on the layout, but it's not super bold. And so I ended up being happy with those cutouts. Before I added the floral paper behind the layout, I roughed up those areas that I cut out. I used my scissors and I distressed the edges. And there was a coral paper on the other side of this pattern paper. So I thought that that actually is a nice look when the, where the paper is folded back, you could see that coral paper. So I added the words this and life to the word beautiful to make this beautiful life. And I used a black marker and I went in and I once again traced around these letters, hopefully to make the title a little bit more prominent and readable. Then I used some self-adhesive pearls in a couple of different sizes. I use very, very small pearls on the sentiments that are at the top of the page. And then I use still small pearls, but a little bit larger to add a couple of little accents to either side of the title. I also put some very, very small strips of pearls on the centers of the butterflies that are already on the page. And then I was thinking that a few more butterflies would really help to finish this layout off. So I'm again inking the edges with the Distress Oxide. And then before I even attach them to the page, I'm adding those strips of pearls. And I get those strips of pearls from the Brad and Eyelet outlet. I usually get them at the conventions. When I go to the Creating Keepsakes convention, they always seem to be there. But I have also ordered them through the mail as well. Now I'm attaching those butterflies down to the page. I put the coral butterflies on the top and the bottom by the flowered paper. I put the green butterflies in a couple of different places on the inside of the wreath. I put one under the large photo, one to the left of the large photo, and then one to the right of those small sentiments at the top of the layout. And then I glued a loose pearl into place and that completes this layout. Here are some close-ups. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Thank you so much for staying till the end. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos and I really hope that you got something useful out of this one. In the description box, you'll find the link to where you can view all of the My Creative Scrapbook kits and purchase one if you would like to. I hope you have a great day everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.